friends and happy independence day uh this is uh, as sonali said the seventh edition every week uh, uh saturday we do this uh, 3 o'clock edition which talks on one subject either on investment uh and how do you intelligently invest second we talk about uh, scale how do you scale enterprises and then we also talk about value and we do this uh, in a in a series structure uh so last time when i took up today's session is all about investment and we pick up uh, one topic which is today's all about angel investment because this is now becoming a buzzword and a lot of people especially the lot of people who have now started looking at angel investment these days at franchise india and business x we get a lot of demand coming in people coming in saying that look i want to invest and i can be an angel in a in a investor and 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 a lot of retail investors which i call people who, who first time investing also look at this as a criteria so i thought this would be very interesting if you really go out and understand how you should really look at if you looking to invest into that and also for some entrepreneurs uh, fellow entrepreneurs who are looking to raise uh, on their startup something how they should really understand from that because eventually uh, how do you attract the right angel uh, would really depend so it's very uh, important that we we go in the depth of that because if i have to really see the journey at uh, the ecosystem of franchise india uh, business x and even entrepreneur entrepreneur is also part of uh, franchise india we are probably the largest uh, uh, you know uh, uh, platform for the entire uh, you know the ecosystem of startups and we've seen a lot of startups and i've seen personally uh, uh, startups which have been actually launched on our platforms and have become very big and some of them have become actually a billion dollar enterprises and so on so and uh, and what we have also really seen a lot of failures you know i personally invested into uh, many of these uh, uh, early startups and uh, and some have done well while my I, my investment is always strategic i always look at uh, startups which are more uh, driven from uh, franchising and scaling through franchising so that's kind of a investment i do on a personal level but i know a lot of people uh, friends of mine who have invested into uh, companies which uh, which got very good scale and they were able to build a good portfolio of their investments and some got very good exits and these examples actually encourage a lot of other people to really join the bandwagon while india is nowhere in the global angel investing space uh, if you look at the mature markets and not only you know take every example to us but if you even take other markets in asia even look at china uh, even look at other markets you will see this is a very very mature market and very mature structure india also i would say a significant work has been done on the angel investing we have about uh, 100 odd credible platforms today available in the angel investing so every city has one platform you will have mumbai in angel uh, network you will have a delhi in the network there is indian net angel network there are a lot of other networks where very very credible people are running uh, we are also at a at business x work with all these people and and encourage that the platforms can be used i personally uh, worked at a lot of these platforms we did a, a big event uh, where we connected almost all these angel networks uh, together and really did a, a selection of their startups which they were promoting at that time and uh, and that was led by an entrepreneur and we reached about uh, 2000 odd different startups which uh, i personally was involved in interviewing and and so on so forth so we have seen a great success story but we have also seen a lot of failures uh, and lately especially uh, and now particularly in this situation also a lot of disruption has happened uh, if you have already invested into a startup and and because of 6 months 7 months of not trading and and a lot of burn continue to happen and the potential to further do raise round uh, raising round is becoming difficult so a lot of uh, changes are happening a lot of uh, angels who have invested into a particular assets now are going and relooking uh, their portfolio and if the portfolio still the asset looks still strong they they are considering to further invest into that to keep that floating because uh, uh, it's very important that the sta- early stage startups keep on the gas going and and you need to maybe look at maybe you are not able to look at outside uh, funding the start uh, the early angels have to come in together and and maybe reinvest again in the business to get to at least uh, some window that it is sustain itself uh, but uh, a lot of uh, are also withdrawing you know this also we seeing that uh, some commitments you've made in the in the business but uh, now because this all changes has happened that the business is not looking that relevant and you don't think that i think a lot of people are uh, while whatever you invested is uh, is obviously done but uh, if you if you, there was further commitment a lot of people are not making that commitment so these changing times are are really giving us a lot of insight but i feel that 
if i have to put my my personal view point on this i would say this would be the greatest time this would be the greatest time to not only look at the new startups but also the lot of startups which are already there uh, in the market and and they already have some kind of a you know a proof of concept or little bit incubation done this would be probably a very good time to really invest and look at investing into that so <clears throat> if you if you really looking at what i call i mean there is always a debate of saying what is a passive investment strategy and i really call there is no real passive investment you know every investment has to be relatively active you need to monitor your portfolio very closely but if you if you really still want to call it a a passive investment where you put as an angel into the fund because you're not day to day running and operating the business from that perspective but you need to really monitor it uh, very very strongly and i feel that uh, uh, it's even more important that how do you really monitor and what is the mechanism that this whole startup has really created to demonstrate to the angels uh, that how they are their business and or their investment is moving up and sometimes it becomes very difficult because they are very very uh, tightly held small businesses run by founders and some early teams and sometimes it's at the bringing that kind of transparency and bringing all the uh, different it becomes very very challenging so uh, how do you really do that so couple of things which are very important before we really get on to the today's discussion uh, you need to really see this for six things which i say before you even get into uh, thinking about uh, getting becoming an angel or investing into as an angel investor uh, first i think if it is not a long term plan for you to really be a angel just don't do it just don't do it for fashion you know so people just find it fashionable to be investor into investing i've seen a lot of people have jumped into doing this kind of angel investing they have no clue why they're investing and what was their long term goal on that only and only very structured who have kept their a very clearly time portfolio and very structured uh, approach to the entire thing have been very successful otherwise it's absolutely wasting money it's like a gamble uh, you just don't want to invest into something which uh, which has absolutely no you don't have an idea and you are not a long term investor in, in, from a mindset view so first tell yourself that if you really want to get into angel investing then you need to really have a very long term view point of that then only any the results would come otherwise it's just about a lot, a lot of people lose money every year Uh, as a very large money been lost in stock market because people just get into the fun of it uh, and then they don't have understand they don't understand how to build the portfolio maintain a portfolio find right kind of exits all that and, and a lot of money get wasted a lot of money got stuck or or you're not able to get anything out of it so at least uh, not a uh, long term return uh, planning on that so so this is where in, in the public market is still is okay because you still have a stock with you which you can obviously sell and uh there is a obviously uh, a listed companies have benefit on on terms of you deciding when you want to really exit out of that investment but in when you come into angel while the upside looks very very attractive for you but uh, it's even more dangerous because uh, you predicting that exit and defining that exit and liquidation of that asset is become very difficult so couple of points i will give it to you this is more starting point for us to really see first you need to really see the timing you know what is the timing telling you what is the stage you are in like today if if you really have to look at uh, uh, as an angel to invest in, see the portfolio from a perspective of 2 uh, to 3 years and you need to really see that in 2 to 3 years what is going to happen to your startup which you are investing what is what is the likelihood look like while well, invest in a long term view point put a longer investment horizon uh, but really see the business from a 2 to 3 years very tightly structured way and say what is going to happen what is the timing telling you and what kind of businesses you really see would thrive and do well and would be able to fund their foundation because startups have all other it might be the greatest idea but it has a lot of other variants around it uh, which can be even more difficult in current time so how do you really define that timing and how do you really predict that second is uh, if you are an active investor always do diversification don't invest into one businesses and and particularly unless and until you have a very big strategic advantage on that like for example franchise india has a investment arm but we invest into businesses which we so we feel that we can also contribute in through franchising to take scale them up so there is a a strategic advantage we have anything which you say investing if you have some strategic advantage on that then you can go and build maybe more on on that particular domain itself it's much safer to do that <coughs> lot of i see a uh, technology guys uh, uh, essentially limit themselves in technology businesses because they understand technology well a lot of people who are uh, i have seen a lot of retail investors who have a very strong understanding of that uh, industry would go and invest into that 
some are media people who who have been very successful media businesses in past and now investing into uh, media startups and and so on so forth so depending on if you have some kind of a domain capabilities or a strategic advantage on that then you can obviously stay in there otherwise if you are just a purely financial investor and you want to bring in and diversify your your portfolio and and don't overdo it uh, keep it tight uh, keep it structured but diversify third is a uh, investment in research i think even before you get on to this whole life cycle of entire thing i would say there are many many platforms which are available there where you can research yourself there are a lot of now global indian uh, uh, tools which are available which you can see a lot of different pitch which are coming in put yourself into the network and start doing a lot of research on this and i would say before you make the first investment maybe put yourself into a six months of training yourself that how you can really become an a good angel investor or uh, early stage investor uh, another thing which you need to really understand how it is a monitoring going to happen for you what you investing on and what is the mechanism of monitoring and what all small data points which you really have to uh, monitor on a regular basis and fifth point would be how do you rebalance your portfolio and you need to really continue to really rebalance because if you really on on this journey and you earmark some capital and say you take out say 1 crore and 1 uh, crore i would like to invest over uh maybe seven or eight assets uh maybe 10 lakh rupees in each asset or something of that nature don't over indulge into one asset and don't go alone also in one that's there are some thumb rules for investment uh don't don't if you are especially if you're not somebody who's strong from that domain itself never take the lead uh and we'll talk about that how how you need to really see that but you need to follow somebody else who has more credibility on that investment portfolio so <clears throat> so how do you really uh, put this entire thing and how do you continue to rebalance every 6 months go and see your portfolio how it is improving and how your equity is improving and what is a what is the current valuation telling you what you invested on and what is the current uh, valuation or what that and finally uh, there is a, a clear exit cycles which you need to really understand and there always would be a temptation for you to stay invested or go indulge more or and say in that thing sometimes you hear a good good piece out of a Uh, early startups and you want to become more greedy to buy more equity in the business and things like that these things are very dangerous uh, in businesses and i've uh, i've personally passed through this and sometimes you you start you starting over indulge in in a particular uh, startup which is which is not a good good situation especially for an angel angel has to by nature feel angels were your actually your family your friends and and people who are were close to you that's what they were called angels so they they essentially come and put you some kind of a risk capital and help you to uh, grow and build your idea and that's how the mindset is so you need to really limit yourself that you're creating a foundation but you're not generating growth capital you're not putting that in that so limit yourself let the asset and the founder find it's a next part of uh, their investors encourage them help them out to get the entire thing but don't over indulge yourself so that's a fundamental of uh, uh, and last is your exit planning in terms of how you how you really want to liquidate and this is biggest problem in in the startup and i have seen a lot of angel have invested into that and they they talk to me and i i end up the discussion by saying that what what is a exit what type of companies you have invested are very good you have already invested into say a different 20 different company and i can tell you there are people who are into multiple businesses and invested in them that thing but when i ask them and say how many companies you were able to really come out and able to book profits and they would not have an answer and that's something which is a big problem and very few i know good investors uh, and especially in and and there are some seasoned investors also and some now uh, so very successful uh, investors are are out there in the market who are build, uh, investing in their uh, personal capacities and they are very good because obviously they they are they coming on any investment now even ratan data is investing into a lot of uh, early stage companies <clears throat> but if you ratan data would invest into anything it anyway takes the credibility of the asset up and and he drives the valuation himself so uh, so so it's 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 a good call you know uh, i i encourage that but uh, not everybody is is having that marquee name to really add to a asset and the assets value would, would go up and and people start looking at that business more seriously and everything starts coming around and all other investors also trust it more because somebody more credible has come in uh, but you need to really see through that how your exit is going to come so i i call it a uh, you know the so to say a risk and reward kind of a structure so what what if i would have to invest and this is purely my my view point on 
on how I would look at investment. So if I have to look at investment, I would always see from three pieces. And I just limit myself in these three pieces. And uh, I would say the first is a founder. I will, I will see the founder, who is he, what background he comes from, and, and we'll we talk in detail about that. So I'll see the founder. I'll see the consumer side very clearly because it's, it's going to be, where is a customer? Is a new customer? Is a shift of the customer? Where is it coming from? Who's buying? Who's buying this, whatever you are offering? Uh, who's going to buy that? And sometimes that clarity is not very sharp enough and, and very clearly predictive enough. So uh, that's very important. And third, if I'm not somebody who understands that domain, I would like to know who else is the investor who comes from that domain. You know, so if I, if I have to really place this independently without having influence of anything to anybody, uh, there can be a good founder, but has not located the right answer for consumer and also has uh, not a very clear uh, lead investor who comes from that domain. So I, if I don't get these three things, I might not uh, like to look at it as an opportunity. Obviously, it's a, uh, these are three things. If I match, then asset looks to me very interesting. Another area which, again, from a risk angle viewpoint, I would look at. Then also, I will go with the three things. I will say, again, the founder. If he's too much dependent on that, which means that the founder itself is so critical in the business that if tomorrow he is not there or the business has to be thing, or he's too too attached to this entire thing, he doesn't want to let it go, and and also very friendly to invite a lot of investors around it. He's not a guy who's 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 too much of listener, and we get that kind of fussy investors uh, found, founders who are who 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 have their own way of looking at things, and and then you, sh you obviously cannot open up the company because you, you obviously. When I say open up, which means unlocking their equity and inviting other investors to also have their viewpoint on that. And that becomes a very big roadblock. And, and, and we've seen a big failures because sometimes it becomes an egoistic ride of uh, driving their own, uh, of, uh, you know, without having solid data backing them. They take decisions which are more, I think, impulsive and, and structured. So who's the found, how's the founder behaving on that? That's very important, which is more behavioral. Second is... Uh, I, I feel that a lot of good startups, particularly, I've seen failing uh, because of two reasons largely. Uh, one is uh, there was a bigger disruption which was already done or was about to be done. Uh, and that is a very clearly, I would say, uh, uh, research and a timing issue. So if you're not researched enough that there is something which has already happened in some place, which is already has changed a lot of things the way business is done, then I would not touch that asset. And second, which is the biggest problem I have seen in the startup space is a lot of people create great products and great services, uh, but they lack distribution. They have no, no real uh, platform of distribution. And distribution takes uh, much longer than what they predicted. And uh, these days, people create innovative products and create some diving. And the first thing I really ask them, what is your distribution idea? How is this going to be done? And, and when I hear the answers, which is very conventional, scaling up and things like that, it looks like that in 10 years, you will still not be anywhere, right? So you and this is not business which you're looking at uh, from a perspective of uh, somebody who would take uh, so long to go to market and how the faster go to market can happen. That's why technology companies are great because they're much faster go to market and they're much faster in scaling up and conventional businesses and conventional startups have a big problem because of that. <clears throat> so what is your, and third, I would always look at that. What is the ability of this asset to raise future capital? Because if, if you get into as an angel and, and the ability and, and it's a business is on a burn and goes to a certain level and then you're not able to see the end, then obviously where is the next round is going to happen and how ability of this current team and structure and the founder would be to able to attract the next level of round and how, how, and what is the milestone on that? What milestone you will be able to do that? So these are things which, which one has to really uh, understand and structure. So we divide this into maybe a <clears throat> six things. Uh, which we would put as a criteria as an angel investor. So first, as I said, the quality of uh, um, the, the founder, which is how the founder and his passion and his background and his integrity. Uh, another big problem which has happened in, in Indian startups is that a lot of time you raised money and deployed in the places where you were not supposed to deploy. And we have a lot of answers of a, a good marquee uh, angel investors who've invested and some of the uh, investors have really complained and put a lot of feedback to us in some some investments which have not have the best of the integrity of the of the founder. So you really have to see through who are you investing with, 
and what is uh, i mean i mean while there is a limit to what you can read uh, but is there a foundation to it is there a uh, you know sometimes these senior executives who a very good pedigree good schooling good college and everything else tells you a lot because uh, they they're trustworthy they're ethical they have they have some kind of a pedigree in backs which can demonstrate their integrity another second point is the market opportunity and how well it is researched and backed with the facts you know and this is where are the areas which i feel that it's not personal assumption i always say data gives you decisions if you not uh, understanding the data uh, you should not take decisions and and make yourself at least for a 15 to 20 days just to go by the founder to present you data and also you do your own research then only you should do it data should do right decisions for you you should not take impulsive calls on that only data should take decisions and set the data what you what you really want to rate on and that's very important uh, again your third is a business plan how how business plan and what is the evidence you can clearly see that this business is ready for go to market because at that stage you just want to want to read a plan which which looks very far fetched uh, for go to market and i have seen a lot of startups we have invested into startups which change the model in between which is fine because the markets can react differently and you can adapt to things in that but uh, their ability to at least whatever they were proposing and go to market was clearly visible that's very very uh, clear another thing which is important is the what is the intellectual property in each of the asset which you invest in if the intellectual property is not very clearly visible which can grow uh, which can create bigger value uh, i would not at this stage invest into businesses and this is one of the areas uh, where we are now started looking at when we look at investment we clearly look at where is the intellectual property what is the unlock value which is being built in this what is intellectual property they are building and sometimes the intellectual property is not looked in a very strict way so i i would say now these days technology is must for almost every company what is the technology in this uh, is there anything which is very strongly proprietary in this uh, what is the intellectual property the overall if you not able to look very clearly that intellectual property which is very significantly a big differentiator and has ability to continue to grow that's where the value would be built and that's what we we did in the last valuation when we did the episode on valuation we really talked about how the intellectual property is in that and as i said uh, another very important aspect is that because you have to raise future rounds uh, and that's six point which is uh, at what stage this value would be built in this intellectual property that you will be able to attract that kind of a capital so and another thing now let's go into talking about when what should be a on angel look at an entrepreneur and i'm not talking more from a entrepreneur perspective that if you are going to an angel and and you're looking from a perspective what do you really expect from a angel in that one i think the 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 pitch the elevator pitch which you call or or the first pitch you need to do it has to have a much deeper working and i have seen so many people sending me these decks sometimes and information and because of business ex, uh, exchange because we get a lot of these people writing to us i feel that there's absolutely nothing in this nothing you can really see and data are not really real time our uh, data are outdated and most of the times the, the information that the statistics and everything else was absolutely not there they're not able to do that there is uh, also a very simple and very simple executive summary which you are able to present because sometimes the angels are not from your domain they don't understand your domain and so you need to really put up a very strong executive summary uh, you need to also define in terms of a product and services where is the prototype how is the prototype either done or is ready to go in the market because too long decision of a basic prototype if not is or not there then i think it needs to be done and finally uh, who are your early adopters who are the customers which you can get tomorrow if you get money right now who you can get really tomorrow what are the early adopters uh, telling you and that's why very important uh, aspect another area which is very important that uh, when you you are working with a with a with an asset to invest uh, very clearly define that how much money they want to really raise and where they want to deploy and if for reasons they are not raising that complete money what happens to your capital so there is always a some kind of a and that's why these uh, networks do because they they collectively come and subscribe and if it's not getting subscribed they don't they withdraw uh, so your money is much safer you cannot go and individually invest into somebody and 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 the full subscription never happens you know i've seen a lot of people who have impulsively invested into startups and they found that uh, whatever was the raise count was not completely done and so whatever little you put 
uh, burns very very fast and so uh, it never went to entirety so normally it is a from a very clearly a prototype to a commercial uh, early success of the business that's the life prime you have to run that business from and if you don't have enough cash to really go from this to uh, commercial first commercial success of the business uh, you will not be able to bring in uh, the next round so that has to be very clearly understood uh, and another area now we will talk about the second part where we talked about the founders and how they really represent and we now have to really talk about i would say the the, the biggest area which is outside this is the customer acquisition you know how how is the customer acquisition really needs to be done and and these are very important aspects and and sometimes very definite answers don't come and i have seen this uh, uh, piece because to me that would be the biggest biggest point for uh, any asset to get qualified that how is the ability to attract the right clients or consumers or whatever so who's going to make the purchase decision if this comes out tomorrow and how fast this can be done and lame answers like oh we do more marketing and we do this and that thing these have no meaning to me you know so there there has to be some kind of a very clear natural demand being significantly demonstrated so that uh, marketing can give you reach it can give you more reach structure but where is your early adopters who is your early adopter why they would come in in time so how do you really uh, use uh, uh, you know all the other pieces and i have seen the decks which have talked about a lot of things on the marketing they will do a lot of social media and this and that all that is fine that's actually amplifying the opportunity and taking it to the next level but where is your early adopter and one of the companies which you are currently working which is bratan data is invested and and i was very impressed very clearly because he converted a, a existing small uh, a pharmacy stores into a generic pharmacy and very clear uh, uh, structure was that he wanted to take a percentage of their business which was not there and that conversion model to me was very clearly defined and he demonstrated by converting few of them and that also defined that there was a clear value in terms of he can convert these not so organized pharmacies uh, into a more branded pharmacy and this is exactly what geomart is now trying to do how technology better experience better distribution back end can convert and help these businesses to uh, convert so these are very important uh, aspects uh, before i get to the last part of my uh, discussion because we already done about 30 minutes and uh, this is a short uh, episode we do it every time uh, this is a risk involved in angel uh, investment so don't really uh, think that this is this is just goes only on the best uh, in a best case scenario which i have learned if you have a portfolio of 8 Uh, ask yourself that two or three would would never give up you know they would they would not be able to uh, this would be probably sunk money for you and uh, and then some would not give you uh, you know the kind of returns which you expected you might balance it out and you might that uh, but two or three good ones can really give you enough to handle your portfolio but i would say uh, don't go into the in the mindset of putting too much uh, too soon uh, in a market understand the 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 long term view point on on the aspect and also uh you know understand triple things you know like monthly burn uh, monthly burn rate is very important for you to really understand where is the burn rate and how far it would have to go because i feel that that if you're not predicting uh and uh, sometimes the answers are uh, like look at housing now housing was able to attract a lot of uh, good investors and so on so forth but there was no hand to i mean there was nobody was able to see through when this company would ever make money right and that's how the the whole issue started happening with the founder and the investors because they got into a huge huge uh, uh, problem because the fundamental was that the founder was very clearly and he became a blue eyed guy at one point in time everybody wanted to look at him and why because uh, his his way of approaching the business was very his own way he was not listening to any of the investors the investors are not come for your passion they want to see the commercial success of the business and commercial success has to be demonstrated at a certain point in time uh, while you you can give the breathing time for a business to come up to that level but if it is endlessly burning and your monthly burn rate either in continue to increase uh, because you are indulging more you are expanding more and there is and even more distant uh, commercial success and profitability is there then it is would be a very very difficult to do that i also feel that a uh, lot of assumptions and data is very important to really back the financial projections sometimes financial projection is the art of excel you know you just keep multiplying in terms of showing your growth and uh, 
unless and until you have a relative data or a comparative brand or comparative asset which has done and performed in the same manner, uh, which clearly defines you that this can be achieved. And also understand the other cost components and uh, uh, which are available in this structure. So put all the heads and put some kind of a microeconomics to this and see how it is priced. And finally, you need to also set the right valuation for what business you are investing on. A lot of times I feel, and this is my more suggestion to uh, uh, you know, early startups, they unlistically value themselves. And unfortunately, the valuation structure, the way we value it, uh, is actually discounting cash flows where we would put a five-year projection and seven-year projection and unrealistic valuations come in. And these are make no sense to me. Especially when you're doing early round, uh, you need to really be very, very realistic. And uh, while I think it has to be not a greed at both ends, uh, the, the startup has to be very realistic in the valuation and uh, but not offload too much of equity. You should offload an realistic valuation a small equity. While the valuation has to be right, but again, overindulgence from an angel should never be there. They should also understand that there has to be multiple rounds which are coming going to come and there has to be enough window and breathing available with the, with the founder so that the founder is able to uh, you know, raise further rounds and so forth. So these are very important aspects when you would look at angel investing. So this is where <clears throat> today's discussion was. This is where, uh, and if you are anybody who's interested to either raise or, or you want to actively participate in as an angel, then you obviously can reach out to us at BusinessX. BusinessX is a platform. We are among the uh, one or two more credible platforms available in the country today, which is linking investors and opportunities. We at BusinessX have uh, largely uh, two aspects of business. One is essentially we are in a big business resale where we sell running businesses to, uh, uh, to future owners. So we do a lot of business resales, value the business and sell that. That's one part of our large part of our our business and we really want to scale that part in a much much bigger way because i feel that india has 30 million businesses and, and given a choice one third would sell and not sell for that they're distressed but sell for value also so that mindset is now open so people look at positively exiting their businesses where are they doing it because they have some other interest to pursue and, and things of that nature so <clears throat> so that's one part of our business second part of our business is helping uh, uh, companies raise capital especially early stage companies because that's an ecosystem which franchise India group uh, really enjoys and we are very proud that we are one of them and also especially non-technology also while we do technology but uh, I know in technology side there are many many platforms also available but when it comes to non-technology uh, businesses they don't find any ecosystem if you say you have a retail idea if you have a, some kind of a brick and mortar uh, healthcare idea uh, like a generic medicine, I gave you example, which was able to attract Ratan Tata's investment and things of that nature. So these kind of businesses come to uh, us more because they see us as being a platform where we need to do it. And if you have any idea which can be scaled through franchising, then franchising there also can be a part of your early uh, investing stage. If you have a strong, credible uh, idea, which is also again, prototype for us is very important. And, uh, and if you are able to see that there is a prototype, there is a, there is a success which is built, then we can also be uh, very, very interested to look at that business model. Uh, we are committed to invest into progressive entrepreneurs, very clearly, very progressive entrepreneurs uh, who have very credible idea. But for us uh, yeah, at Franchise India, direct investments is only ideas which can be scaled through franchising. Uh, that's where we look at our direct investment. Otherwise, we will obviously be a facilitator as a platform to uh, help you to reach out there. So this is was uh, an, a small short episode on on how do you really invest if you are as an angel. Next episode on investment will take up a, another uh, part of uh, investing and and uh, and so every every series we are we are going to talk about either investment uh, one time on scaling up business and third is how do you build value. Uh, so over to you Sonali for your thank you note to everybody and if you have any questions for me I'm more than happy to take. Thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful insights yet again. Um, yes, we do have a few questions lined up and I was just looking through the questions and a lot of the questions that we have are on similar lines. So uh, the first question is from Mr. Anurag Gandhi. He's asking, what are the sectors you are looking at for three to four years of investment? Similar question uh, we have from another user who says, what are the major investment sectors or avenues today? like stocks, real estate, etc. Please suggest about long-term investment sectors. 
So, uh, so now I'm 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 presuming what you're saying is that you're talking about all the uh, asset class and and uh, looking at. So again, I'm saying this would be a very personal choice. Uh, what what is the investment you want to do? What is the horizon of investment? And how how patient how much patience you have for holding on the investment? Uh, so it would depend on that. And 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 at what stage you would need the liquidity? Uh, all these have to combinations have to come through. Uh, then only I think you can define an asset. If you also always want to have obviously liquidity available that you can liquidate that asset, then I think between obviously there either stock or real estate uh, would make money. Like any financial uh, structured product, uh, which means you can obviously liquidate any time and and real estate also largely. I mean, given a window of uh, uh, if the asset is not bad, they given a window of 90 days to 120 days. You can you can normally exit uh, uh, and uh, and find liquidity. But I would say then I would go more on the financial side. If you it, always you want to have uh, the reason of liquidity available and you always want to have that, then I will obviously put more marks to the, not even real estate because real estate also is a little bit of a long term uh, investment cycle. And uh, and uh, so I will give. Clearly, and last four months, if somebody is really understood, uh, then stock has obviously uh, given very good returns, and hopefully, I mean, I think continues to give uh, for the balance uh, year, uh, because I know a lot of people have actually survived this crisis uh, because our markets perform. Uh, so, so that's a that's a good news, uh, especially on some stocks, uh, really did extremely well. I mean, the reasons for it because of the excitement in pharma and things of that nature. So all that uh, happened and helped uh, the markets. Uh, and uh, uh, so, so that would be a long term. But if you're looking at uh, investing into businesses, and then I would obviously, as I said, if you're investing as an angel, then I would say two to three year horizon businesses, very clearly businesses which would have a little bit of positive impact, or uh, businesses which can, uh, you know, change uh, uh, in the in the current times. The consumer behavior is significantly changing. Anything which is which is absolutely matching the trend, uh, I would look at those businesses. And uh, obviously, for me, uh, some of the sectors which makes a lot of sense still, uh, from purely from a market penetration uh, and from the opportunity viewpoint, I always say this: uh, it's edutech. Edutech is very close to what I think uh, is. In, I think healthcare again, technology linked. Uh, I would say I've just made one investment in e-clinics. Uh, uh, you know. This is one investment which we did uh, recently, uh, and this e clinics is, uh, and uh, again very strategically we, we don't really come and because we feel that this can be scaled up. So e clinic is a uh, where you can uh, you know digitally uh, connect and en engage and run a, a polyclinic uh, with doctor not being present physically, uh, but through digitally available uh, to do it. I think that's future. Uh, while there would be a lot of evolution of that model would happen over the time. Uh, both going to technology and and also by the capability of uh, uh, execution. So all that would take its own time, but there, I have no doubt that that would be industry. But my multiple industries we can really talk about. And and if you have some outside, I always say this, and that you really ask yourself what else you bring in outside the money, and take decision more on that than only capital. Capital is only one part of it. What else you bring in? What else you you have? Uh, thing and that. Should take your calls of uh, investment. Any other question, Sonali? Uh, yes, sir. So we have another question from Mr. Anil. He's saying, how much percentage of scientific approach can ensure success in retail franchise model, and what are they? What? Are, how? How much percentage of scientific approach can ensure a success in retail franchise model? Yes, sir. So retail uh, franchise model. If if I have understood the question, I. have I'm still not very clear about what you mean by scientific approach. Uh, are very clearly have a very uh, in in true sense there there are certain fixed matrix in every every retail or franchise model. Uh, say if you say at a retail food business, the matrix are very clearly that there's a food cost which should be 10, 30 percent. Your occupancy cost should not be more than 15 percent. Your HR should be another 10 percent. And so all that if you number it down, your utility your uh, uh, royalties and other things you give in that, and you were left with about 15 to 20 percent return on sales. So these are metrics which are very clearly defined for almost every uh, business. If you take fashion, if you take uh, salon, if you take a, a pharmacy, if you take a jewelry store, when 
margins can go as low as two to three percent in gold jewelry. So, so all these businesses have a very clear uh, per square feet uh, throughput, which means that what businesses can do per square feet. So when you you clearly can understand what kind of a potential this uh, sales wise it could have. So all that scientific data is available, and and then you need to do your cost analysis to see the viability of a business model. And that's very easy because these most of the retail uh, franchise models have uh, a lot of a comparative data available. And problem happens in in businesses when you want to invest where there is no comparative data available. And that's where uh, you know intuition starts taking over. And when you start taking intuition, then you can go wrong or absolutely extremely sometimes very good. But I feel that stay very connected to the three points I have said. Stay connected to understanding the founder. Spend a lot of time with the founder. Understand the consumer side. Where is the consumer? Who's early adopter? Why would they come? How compelling that answer is uh, to you? And get a person along with you who has a domain experience on that business. Uh, if you are able to do these three things, largely you will not go wrong. Absolutely. Uh, so we have another question from Mr. Anurag Gandhi. He is saying, can you help us find out the existing business brand value to sell to Pan India business having existing turnover of 160 CR? How much you said? Sorry, can you repeat the question uh, again? It's from Mr. Anurag Gandhi. The question is, can you help us to find out the existing business brand value to sell Pan India business having existing turnover of 160 CR? It was a very, very specific question. I mean, 160 crore, why? I'm just I'm a little curious that why only 160 crore? You know, uh, this is a very uh, peculiar question. I'm no, I mean, I've never heard a question like this that find a business which is doing 160 crore. Uh, that's something which is a, uh, you know, while we can obviously find businesses around that, there are a lot of businesses that uh, depend on that. But I think the best way to approach is which industry you really want to invest and, uh, and, uh, you know, one it's 60 crores in, in a commodity business is nothing. In a service business is very, very big. Um, so it depends on where you are in terms of uh, uh, what your investment interest is. I think then we can obviously, uh, you know, uh, more than happy to help you out. And if the, if, if the benchmark is certain amount of turnover, uh, because a lot of people have, and I, I understand the reason sometimes, uh, then obviously you can find a lot of assets around it, and there are many assets available in this uh, this range. Actually, the mid market we call the mid market is is full of uh, uh, assets available, very good, high quality assets available now in the market uh, which Business X has mandate on, uh, which we would more than happy to do that. So you can, if you want to reach me, and we are more than happy to discuss. Any other question? No, sir. So other than that, we mainly have queries uh, about people uh, wanting to register as investors on Business X and they want to know more. So uh, anyone who has any doubts related to that, please feel free to reach out to me or to Gaurav, sir. And we, uh, we would be more than happy to assist you with the same. Uh, Mr. Navil, uh, Mr. Kiran and uh, Mr. Anurag, I have noted down your name, so I'll personally be reaching out to you as well. But other than that, anybody who wants to reach out, please feel free. And uh, yes, sir. So that is it for the Q and A section. So, if you have any interest on uh, investing or acquiring any running business or even scaling up your own business or raising capital, please reach to Sonali and and she will be more than happy to take it up. And if you want to reach me uh, for any questions, uh, uh, I'll be more than happy to write my email ID and uh, and we will be more than happy to really take up your questions. Uh, this is my direct email ID, gm at gauravmarya.com. Uh, send your queries and we will be more than happy to really take it up. So thank you very much. Stay tuned with us. And, and if you are in, in, uh, you know, uh, in the series of investment or looking to scale your business or even looking at how to value, even sometimes if you're taking this as a consulting assignment, this would be series can be very, very interesting for you to, uh, continue to do that. These are simple points. We don't want to really in this series talk about uh, you know things which are uh, it's it's a very very simple way of approaching how these three things should be done: investing, scaling, and building value in enterprises. So thank you very much. We'll see you in the next edition Saturday, three o'clock uh, next week. Thank you, Sonali, for hosting this. <music>